There's a couple really important things you need to know before you start ramming your GPU into your PC. GPUs require access to a PCI Express or PCIe slot. These are the long rectangular connectors on your motherboard. Some motherboards have multiple slots, but they're not all equal in terms of performance. Typically, the top slot is where you want to install your GPU because it has full unrestricted access to the PCIe bandwidth. If you want to double check, you can easily verify this with your motherboard's manual. Most GPUs require a direct connection to the power supply. It's important to make sure your power supply can provide enough power to run your GPU. GPU manufacturers usually provide a recommended system power supply rating, and you can find that under the GPU specs on their websites. Make sure your power supply has the right connectors. Traditional GPU or PCIe power cables typically have a 6 plus 2 pin configuration, making 8 pins total. There's also these newer 16 pin connectors called 12 volt high power or 12 volt 2 times 6 that can deliver a ton of power to the latest GPUs. So you need to know which power connectors you're going to need and then make sure you have them available before you start installing your GPU. The first thing you want to do is make sure the system's off and disconnected from the power source. It's also a good idea to touch a metal object to discharge any static electricity from your body. Sensitive electronics like GPUs don't really like getting shocked. We need to make sure we have access to the correct expansion slots on the back of the case so we can mount our GPU. I find the easiest way to do that is to just pick up the GPU and line it up with the PCIe slot on the motherboard. When we do that, it's easy to see the back plate of the GPU is going to need access to these two expansion slots. On this case, the expansion slots are secured with screws, so I'll just take my screwdriver and unscrew those. And then I can slide the mesh covers out of those slots, hold onto those screws you just took out because you're going to need them to secure the GPU. Now if we take a look at the PCIe connector on our GPU, you can see it's got this little tab sticking out on one side. That's what allows the GPU to lock into position in the PCIe slot. Now, if we look at the slot on the motherboard, you can see there's a little locking clip on the end. We need to push that back so it's open and ready to accept the little tab on the connector of the GPU. I'm going to line up the connector on the GPU with the slot on the motherboard and line up the back panel with the open spaces on the back of the case at the same time. And with it all lined up, I'm going to press it into the slot by applying some pressure to the side of the GPU. If you did it right, you should see that locking clip close and it should make a click sound as well. I ran into a bit of an issue here. The I.O. plate on my GPU was hitting the mesh cover on the next expansion slot down from where I'm installing. It wasn't letting me get the GPU all the way against the back panel of the case, so I'm just removing the third cover plate here and that'll fix the problem. Depending on the GPU and case you have, you might run into little issues like this, but don't worry about it, it's really not a big deal. Next, we need to secure the GPU to the case with the screws we removed from those expansion slots at the back. You can see how the GPU kind of wants to sag down under its own weight, so we're going to need to support it to be able to get the screw holes all lined up. That looks good right there, and I'm going to put both screws back in and make sure they're nice and tight. Now we're going to move on to hooking up the power. If your cables are already installed in your power supply, then you just need to look at it and find the right ones that you're going to need. But if you have a modular power supply and you're starting from scratch, you're going to have to plug those cables in yourself. If that's the case, find your PCIe or 16-pin power cables that came with your power supply. They should be labeled PCIe or VGA. Plug the solid end, not the split 6 plus 2 end, into the PCIe power connector on your power supply. Take your time and pay attention to the labels on the cables and the power supply when you're doing this. Sometimes CPU power cables can be confused with PCI Express or GPU power cables because they look so similar, but they are very different and it's important to get it right. If you're going to be using the 16-pin high power cable, that's going to have its own labeled connector on the power supply as well. If you need more help with your power supply cables, I have a detailed video that I'll link for you down in the description. Keep in mind, every power connector on your GPU is going to need a cable plugged into it. I'm currently not aware of any GPUs that use more than one 16-pin high power cable, so you're just going to need one of those if your GPU has that connection type. Next, we're going to feed the cables through one of the cutouts or pass-throughs to the main area of the case where the GPU is. And you want to try and plan it out so the cables don't get in the way of any fans or other hardware in your build. Luckily, power cables are designed so they can only go in one way. If you look at the cable, you can see a little clip on one side. That needs to latch onto the notch on the connector on the GPU, so that's how you know which way to plug it in. If you only need six of the eight pins, you can just leave those extra two off there. But if you do need all eight, there's a tiny little notch on there that clips the two pieces together to make it easier to push into the connector. So we can just line this up with the connector and press it all the way in. You should hear a little click sound when the clip latches onto the connector. Good. Now if you have cables like this one that have a secondary 8-pin connector coming off the main one, I recommend just using the main connector. So if your GPU has two or more 8-pin connectors that need power, you really should be going with separate power cables for each one rather than making multiple connections with one cable. 
With the 16-pin cables, power supply manufacturers advise against bending the cable too close to the connector. You can just check your power supply manual to confirm the requirements and recommendations for your cable. So with this one, we just line it up with the connector and push it all the way in as far as it'll go. And this GPU has a little red light there that goes off once the cable's properly seated. It's nice because it makes it really easy to tell when it's fully inserted. And if we look at the cable now, we can see we don't have a bend within the first 40 millimeters, so we're good. If you're using one of these adapters to go from 8-pin cables to the 16-pin connector, again, you're going to want to make sure you use a separate cable for each splitter going into the adapter. Now we can plug our monitor into the graphics card. I have an HDMI cable, you might have the same or you could have DisplayPort. Don't forget to plug your main system power back in and fire it up. Depending on your system, when you install a new piece of hardware like a GPU, sometimes it could take a little extra time to boot up while the system runs a few checks, so just be patient and it should boot up like normal. Okay, now we're in Windows. This is Windows 11, and we need to get the latest graphics driver installed so our new GPU works properly. Since I installed an NVIDIA GPU, I'm gonna head over to NVIDIA's website and find the drivers page. They offer two different options. If you wanna have automatic driver updates, you can click here and download the NVIDIA app that will auto detect your GPU, download the right driver, and keep your drivers up to date over time. Or if you don't want the app, you can use the search box to manually find the driver you need. So if I do that, I can just click here and download just the driver installer. If you have an AMD or an Intel GPU, just check the description. I'll provide a link to those driver downloads for you so you don't have to go search in the internet for it. And that's it. With the drivers installed, you're ready to start using your new GPU. If you need help with other PC building stuff, check out my PC building playlist. There's tons of detailed videos in there and I'll link it for you down below. Make sure you get subscribed for more content and we'll see you.